This video is a debate between two characters, both played by me, but don't expect to see one side get destroyed. I aim to present strong arguments on both sides. Be patient though, one of the sides takes a little while to get warmed up. Hi Luna. Alex, wow! I'm surprised to hear from you after, uh, um, you know. Yeah, I need to talk to you. Uh-oh. Is it about... No, no. It's just, ugh, the election. Oh shit. You called me to talk about the election? My least favorite topic? All right, what's on your mind? Well, when Bernie Sanders didn't get the presidential nomination, I was like, no, no way am I voting for anyone but him. Fuck Joe Biden. But I changed my mind. I'm gonna vote for Biden. Oh, Alex. Do you hate me? I could never hate you. You're my favorite liberal. <laughs> I'm not a liberal. I don't think we should talk about this. We'll both get upset. Look, I know that Biden is trash, okay? He has a 40-year record of being a loyal servant to corporations, supporting austerity, mass incarceration, imperialist wars. But compared to Donald Trump, Joe Biden is the lesser evil. The lesser evil is still evil. If you want to indulge in some fantasy where that's not the case, go ahead and vote, but I'm gonna stay home and find a more pleasant way to indulge my fantasies. Sounds fun, but I live in a swing state. If I don't vote Biden, I make it more likely that Trump wins. And that would be a disaster. Look at global warming. We're speeding towards irreversible climate change tipping points, and if we pass them, humanity is doomed. Literally. Scientists say this could make huge regions of the world unable to support human life, cause massive food shortages, make civilization impossible, or even basic survival of the human race impossible. How can you think the shitty policies of Biden and the Democratic Party will stop global warming? It's at least an improvement. Even though Biden rejects the Green New Deal, his climate policies are way better than Trump's, and better than any Democratic presidential candidate in history. It won't be enough to stop climate change. I know. But it slows us down, buys us some time. Better to be walking towards the edge of a cliff than running towards it. Well, at least you admit you're voting for collective suicide. And what the hell do you suggest? All you radicals boycotting the election don't solve anything. You just gallop around on your moral high horse. At least that horse ain't galloping off a cliff. Oh, fuck you. You want suggestions? How about activism and class struggle? Organizing workplaces and communities? You know, real politics. Activism is important, but it's also important to elect someone who will be sympathetic to the demands that activists make. You think Biden and the Democrats will be sympathetic? They at least have to pretend to care about workers and climate change and social justice, so they're more likely to bow to pressure from activists. We need to fight for reform, but always vote for the person who will be easiest to fight. But you're sabotaging yourself. Why would Biden grant any demands if he knows that the people making these demands have promised to vote for him? He already has what he wants. I have thought about this, that maybe it's better not to endorse Biden unless he adopts a more progressive platform. Show him that he has to earn our vote. We won't just give it unconditionally because he's the lesser evil. Oh, gross. Don't say our vote. Leave me out of this. Okay, okay. Anyways, this is why I wasn't going to vote for Biden, because we need to show the Democrats that they can't expect us to keep voting for these piece of shit neoliberals like Biden. That if they want to win elections, they need to give us someone further to the left, like Bernie Sanders. But... I changed my mind because the alternative is to let Trump win, and with the survival of humanity at risk, that's unacceptable. Humanity is at risk whether Trump wins or loses. But he escalates that risk. He tore to shreds international treaties on nuclear weapons, and soon an another treaty is due for renewal. If Trump is in office, he will let this treaty die. These are weapons with the power to cause humanity's extinction. Doesn't that worry you? You're putting blame in the wrong place. Yes, I'm worried about nuclear war and climate change and 127 other things. But the source of our problems isn't which party or leader holds power, it's capitalism. You can't seriously believe it doesn't matter who's in power. There are differences in the policies of the Democrat Party and Republican Party, and in other countries there are differences in the policies of their major parties. 
And because government has so much power, even small differences have enormous consequences, even life or death consequences, for an enormous number of people. Both parties are loyal to the capitalist class, and voting for either one is voting for a boot on your neck, grinding your face into the dirt. The only choice is whether the boot is on the left foot or the right foot. Trump stomps your face with both boots. Just look at the judges he appoints. He's stacking the judiciary with far-right zealots who want to crush the rights of women, gays, and trans people. And Trump is pushing this country towards fascism. You want to talk about what's pushing us towards fascism? How about the increasing hardship and humiliation inflicted by capitalism? This causes anger and fear and some people misdirect those emotions at people of color and immigrants. But Trump makes more people misdirect their fear and anger because of the racist things he says. You think Biden will stop the rise of fascism? Didn't you see what happened when Obama was president? The Obama years are when fascism and white supremacy started gaining, or I should say regaining, popularity as ideas and as organized movements. The Trump years just continued this trend. True, the flames of fascism were already spreading, but Trump throws gasoline on the fire. He spews horrible slander about immigrants and Muslims. He calls Antifa terrorists, talks about Black Lives Matter like they're thugs and criminals. He dog whistles support for white supremacists and fascists. It's just words, but it has an impact. Because he's the president, the media has no choice but to give him a platform for everything he says. And because he's president, people give what he says moral authority. No wonder fascism is spreading. But you don't know how things would have turned out if Hillary Clinton had beaten Trump last election. The popularity of fascism might have accelerated just as much. What? And four years of Biden could spread fascism as much as four more years of Trump. Don't be ridiculous. Can you prove me wrong? It's impossible to prove wrong. I don't have a parallel universe to do a controlled study in. It's just common sense. Allowing common sense to take the place of evidence and logic is one of the most dangerous habits of mind. Well, it's also logical. Who's more likely to make fascism gain popularity? A neoliberal like Biden or a borderline neo-fascist like Trump? You're oversimplifying. There are other factors you're missing. Okay, I'm skeptical, but let's hear it. So, on social issues, the Democrats are liberal. On economic policy, Democrats lean to the right, though slightly less than Republicans. But according to conservative media like Fox News, the Democratic Party is full of socialists. If only it were true. When Democrats control government, people who are on the conservative right feel threatened. They feel under attack. And that can push them even further to the right sometimes as far as fascism. Um, do you have any proof? You can see it for yourself. Fox News and right-wing talk radio constantly screech about the radical socialist Democrats who are conspiring to crush your freedom. And when there's a Democrat in the White House or Democrat majority in Congress, this alarmist fear-mongering kicks into overdrive. Mm, I'm not sure this proves your theory. Maybe not, but there's another thing about the Democrats that could exacerbate fascism. Democrats support, or at least give lip service, to causes like Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement, trans rights, gay rights. Um, all this sounds like the opposite of what fascists are into. So... Yeah, but meanwhile, the Democrats wage a brutal class war against working class people of every race and gender. However, people get this false perception, and I stress that it's a false perception, that the Democratic Party makes life better for people of color and immigrants, giving them special privileges. And this makes some white people jealous and resentful. Then along comes the neo-Nazi to whisper in their ear, Hey, white man, ever notice these liberals want to blame you for everyone else's problems, but never give a shit about yours? Luna, it sounds like you're making excuses for Nazis. I'm not making excuses, I'm describing reality. You're describing a theory. And even if it's true, what are you suggesting? That we should stop supporting progress and protections for marginalized groups? No, we absolutely should support this. We should fight for it. But we also need to fight for class issues. And we need to show that these issues are connected. We need to show that the working class can never liberate itself as long as we keep allowing racism and nationalism to divide us. Fine, but it's still absurd to say that fascism would spread more under Biden than Trump. I never said that. I said you don't know who will be worse. 
But Trump is a borderline fascist. In the debate, he told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by. And he's telling his supporters to go to the polls and watch. That's voter intimidation. You want to stop fascism? Then we need to build the type of mass movement that can show all working class people of every race and every identity group that our fates are connected. That it's not about putting one group ahead of the other because none of us can find liberation unless we all find it together, you know? You're so right. And Bernie Sanders was spreading that exact message. Oh, I wish Bernie was facing Trump in the election. Not that rancid shitworm Joe fuckity fuck Biden. Then we could both vote with a clear conscience. Oh, hell no, I wouldn't vote for Bernie. <laughs> Say what? I don't vote. Period. <laughs> Alex? Sorry, I didn't realize this whole time I'd been speaking to an absolute dumbass. Look, I'm anti-capitalist and anti-state. Every politician is pro-capitalist and wants to run the state. These are our class enemies. Why would I vote for our enemies? We're taught that voting is an act of power, but it's an act of submission. You vote for who has power over you. If this is power, then choosing your prison guards is freedom. Voting at best gives us nice leaders. Oh, anarchy girl, I want to change the world with you. But that just ain't what you want to do. I wish you'd try it, but you just can't deny it. All you want to do is riot. Your face is kind of weird, but I like you quite a bit. But it drives me fucking crazy that your politics are shit. It makes me sad, though you're fun and you're sassy. You just want to do the smashy smashy. Alex? 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 Huh? Oh, sorry. Um, so why don't you vote? The same reason I don't write letters to Santa Claus asking for world peace. I find the refusal to vote disgusting. Know what I find disgusting? It's disgusting that we're expected to seek relief from the horrors of capitalism from the very fucking people who create those horrors. It's disgusting that every election, people rally support for the ruling class. It's bad enough you won't vote for Biden, but not even Bernie? His reforms would have transformed people's lives. Free healthcare, free college. If you don't care about that enough to vote, the mark of your obscene level of privilege. You're attacking me, your supposed comrade? You should be attacking the ruling class, which includes Bernie Sanders. And who says I'm that privileged? I need these reforms too. Well, then you're stupid. No, I just fucking refuse to give my consent to an illegitimate fucking authority. Half the population doesn't vote, and what does that achieve? Nothing. It's a symbolic boycott with no material impact. All it does is make you feel good about yourself for not getting your hands dirty. Well, guess what? Your hands are dirty, stained with the blood of the oppressed who will suffer if Trump gets elected. Calm down, so I don't vote. You act like I personally stabbed a shiv into the back of our great democracy. If you care about the oppressed, then we need class struggle, not voting. Well, how do you make it sound like we have to choose one or the other? Have you ever grasped the concept that we can do both? Voting only takes one damn hour out of one damn day. As much as I hate voting, I don't tell other people not to vote, and I don't shame them if they do. Voting is not the problem. The problem is electoral politics, which is when you try to encourage people to vote or to vote a certain way. Electoral politics includes things like sticking campaign signs in your lawn, bumper stickers, door knocking, social media posts for or against a candidate. What the hell, Luna? We should not ignore something so important as who will have the power to make decisions for society. But when you pin your hopes for change on an election and convince others to do the same, that hinders us from finding real solutions to our problems. I realize that democracy is a 365 day a year activity and voting is only one day of it. Then why don't you act like it? I follow you on Twitter. I see how focused you are on elections. You talked endlessly about Bernie Sanders all through 2019 and the start of 2020. Not endlessly. Then when Bernie dropped out of the presidency, 
presidential race. You spent like a month complaining about but it. But that was a disaster. And ever since then, you talk nonstop about Biden versus Trump. You're exaggerating. In 2018, you did the same with the congressional election. It never stops. I talk about other issues. If you look at my Twitter, you'll see that... Oh, uh, I guess I do talk about it a lot, but so what? It matters a lot who controls government, so why not try to convince people to vote a certain way? Cause it's harmful. Oh my god, how? How could it be harmful? Well, what have you been saying about why people should vote for Biden? That we need to get Trump out of office because he's dangerous and makes everything worse. Exactly. Focusing on how terrible Trump is takes the focus off the real source of our misery. Being alive in 2020. <laughs> no, capitalism. Anytime you put blame on a politician or political party for our problems, you cover up what's really to blame. Why not both? We can recognize that certain politicians make things worse or better, and also recognize that capitalism is a problem. That's not what happens in practice. I've heard you criticize the climate policies of the Republicans and the Democrats, but you never talk about how the roots of climate change are in capitalism. If you're worried about capitalism, then elections can help. Some countries have socialist parties. Socialist parties? They're just a bunch of liberals. Oh my god, you think everyone's a liberal. Well, that's the thing about liberals. Half of them won't admit what they are. I feel personally attacked right now, but I'll let it slide. The best that these socialist parties will give you is social democracy. Good! Look how much better things are in social democratic countries like Sweden. A lot of countries have tried social democracy, or at least tried some social democratic policies. And yeah, social democracy can be comparatively better than other forms of capitalism, but sometimes it's kind of a disaster. How could it be a disaster to tax the rich and use that money for the good of all? Unless you think it's a disaster that rich people can no longer afford a second mansion. Well, if social democracy is kept within limits that the capitalist class finds tolerable, it can create economic growth. But if it passes those limits, it causes economic crisis. Though, to be fair, we've also seen that neoliberalism or any set of economic policies within capitalism can cause economic crisis. So what's the problem? The problem for social democracy is that capitalists tend not to like it. They don't want to pay high taxes and high wages. And they're afraid that high wages will cause high inflation and drain the value of their wealth. Oh, boo-hoo. Who cares if they don't like it? That's their problem. But they make it our problem. They react with what's called a capital strike. Many become either unable or unwilling to invest. Finance capitalists pull their money out of the country and invest elsewhere. When that happens, things go to shit. Unemployment rises, people become desperate for work, so they accept lower wages, which pushes wages down for everyone. The tax base shrinks, which means less money for public services. So what are you saying, that we can't have nice things? In capitalism, no. We're damned if we do, damned if we don't. Then how do you explain all the countries with free healthcare, free college, and better social programs than we have in the States? I don't see their economies crashing. Some countries suffered a capital strike in the past, then cut back their social democratic policies. Others never went that far with these policies to begin with. And all these countries have had decades of neoliberal austerity, just like us. They still have free healthcare and other free public services, but these services have suffered damage from decades of budget cuts and neglect. Even long-time social democratic countries like Sweden have slowly become less social democratic than they once were. But they have it better than us! It's better, but don't be fooled into thinking that social democracy can solve the problems of capitalism. There's only so much taxation and wage increases that capitalists will tolerate before they stop investing, or worse, overthrow the government like they did to President Evo Morales in Bolivia. A government can get away with a limited degree of social democracy, but they have to avoid pushing things beyond what capitalists will tolerate. So what I'm hearing is that we can have social democracy, we just have to keep it within limits. But those limits are a problem. No matter who we elect to government, the capitalist class has the ultimate power, because they can hold an economy hostage. Well, what we have now is neoliberalism on steroids, so even a limited social democracy sounds pretty good. And we could have had it if Bernie Sanders had won! 
He came so close. But that's okay. Democrat voters are shifting to the left. We're electing socialists to Congress. 2024 could give us a socialist presidential candidate. Oh, Luna, everything you say about electoral politics is true. We need to build working class power and fight for revolution. Oh, Alex, you mean it? Yes, you've convinced me with your brilliant rhetoric. Oh, Alex, I'm so happy. And Luna, remember last time when you said you loved me and I said I didn't love you back? I lied. You did? Yes, Luna. Your face still is kind of weird, but I think I could work with what you got if you grew a beard. What? A beard? Yeah. You mean like this? I was thinking a big old Marx or Kropotkin beard, but this'll do. Luna. Luna? Did you hear anything I said? Yes, Alex. I heard every word, and it was beautiful. Oh, so you agree. If a candidate is as left-wing as Bernie, we should convince people to vote for them. What? N no. So, 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 so wait. Do, do you want me to grow a beard? What? Never mind, I probably can't anyways. But I was gonna try for you. Okay. Anyways, if we want social democratic policies, let's pursue this through activism and strikes, not elections. Elections are a circus that distract us from taking effective action. We need to build working class power. This is the only way to get real socialism. The idea that politicians can solve our problems is a fairy tale that keeps us passive. It won't be a fairy tale if we get left-wing politicians elected. Fuck that. These so-called left-wing politicians and their hordes of ass-kissing cheerleaders are what sell us false hope. But it's not false hope. Leftist politicians make real improvements. Fine, they won't get rid of capitalism, but at then least- Then it's not enough. Our only hope is ourselves. If you encourage people to vote, you promote our reliance on politicians to solve our problems. You make us rely on their power rather than build our own. But we're capable of doing both. Do you think people have such fragile minds that just casting a ballot will destroy their interest in activism? It's not the voting, it's the mentality and habit of relying on politicians to improve things. This is a mentality and habit of dependency. But we are dependent on them. That's not a mentality or habit, it's just the reality that politicians have power and we don't. But we need to change that. We need to become powerful. And that means building a mass movement of a united working class. But that's hard to do when we keep hearing why it's so important to get this or that person elected. Because the hidden message is that we could never gain the power to solve our problems. That our only hope is to prostrate ourselves under the table of the ruling class in the hopes they'll sweep us a few crumbs. You're turning electoral politics into a scapegoat. The huge working class movements of the past no longer exist today, but it's silly to blame that on electoral politics. There are other explanations. Deindustrialization, improved techniques of union busting, the class collaborating compromises by mainstream unions, generations of propaganda making people fear socialism. Need I go on? Look, I know electoral politics is not the only factor, but we'll never build power from below as long as we're looking for saviors from above. Wow, that's very deep. Oh, thank you. Honestly, Luna, I respect that you have these idealistic goals, but we need to be realistic. Yes, and being realistic means acknowledging that capitalism is cancer and revolution is the only solution. Even assuming that revolution could possibly work and wouldn't just descend into violence or another dictatorship, and that's a big assumption. Do you know how far away revolution is? How impossible it seems from here? Should, should we reschedule for earlier? Maybe you're too privileged to realize this, but people are suffering, dying. We don't have time to wait for your revolution. In the meantime, people need health care and affordable housing. 
Of course we need these things, but we can win them and other reforms through activism and class struggle. Yeah, we can do this and try to get left-wing politicians elected. But it's not just the reforms that matter, but how you achieve them. We must not pursue reforms in a way that sabotages our future potential for revolution. And that's what happens when we point to elections as a way to get reform. It keeps us dependent on a political class that is not on our side. A political class with no desire to create socialism and no capacity to, even if they did. We whimper at their feet when we need to be standing tall. We sabotage our long-term goals for the gamble of measly short-term goals. Measly? You're so privileged. That's an insult to people who will die or become homeless or be deported without these reforms. Okay, true. But we can't sacrifice long-term goals for short-term goals. This is why we must win reforms through our own actions, because this builds our confidence, builds our autonomy and solidarity as a class, builds our capacity to organize, and builds our power. And as all these things grow, we become increasingly prepared to escalate from reform to revolution. I'm skeptical. This year, there's been months of protests in multiple cities, and they've only won some small superficial reforms by local government. The reforms that elections can offer are much bigger. Unfortunately, protests are rarely enough to win more than a few minor reforms. We need a stronger arsenal of tactics than protest. But to win big reforms like the Green New Deal or Medicare for All? I can't see that being won by activism alone. We also need politicians in office who support these things. Not necessarily. The most economically progressive legislation this country has ever seen was the New Deal. People think this was a gift from President Roosevelt out of the kindness of his capitalist heart or some shit. But no, in 1932, the year he was elected, he was a fiscal conservative, but one year later he passed the New Deal. Not what you'd expect from a fiscal conservative. Why the turnaround? He was pressured into it by activists and striking workers. This is just one cherry-picked example. And besides, building the capacity to win reforms of this size through class struggle is no easy task. It can take months, even years, for workers to win gains in a single workplace. How many years will it take to create a movement that has power to win reform on a municipal or national level? In the meantime, we cannot afford to ignore elections. But imagine if we put the same effort into organizing a general strike as we do into telling people to vote a certain way. Thousands of activists campaigned for Bernie Sanders. Imagine if they'd put that same time into actual class struggle. Maybe if we did these things, we'd already be a united working class capable of winning huge reforms. I'm sorry. These reforms are too important to wait. We must get them by any means necessary, and that includes campaigning for the lesser evil. You know, I have the perfect meme to respond to what you just said. Here, I'll send it to you. Oh, great. I love it when people use memes in a debate to prove a point. Very credible. <laughs> Damn right. Fine. Let's see. The long-term effects of voting for the lesser evil. The left, the center, the right. Then the left moves to the center. Then the left moves further to the right, and even further. Okay, I get it, but it's just a meme, and a meme using Comic Sans, the cringiest of fonts. Don't go dragging Comic Sans into this, okay? It doesn't prove anything. But this is what has actually happened, and not just in this country. It reminds me of something that Hunter S. Thompson said. He was an author and journalist, right? Right. So, he wrote this back in 1972, but it could have been written today if he just switched the names of President Nixon for President Trump. The big thing this year is beating Nixon, but that was also the big thing as I recall 12 years ago in 1960, and as far as I can tell, we've gone from bad to worse to rotten since then, and the outlooks is for more of the same. Sound familiar? Yeah, but it proves nothing. It proves that this focus on getting rid of the greater evil has landed us right where we are now, which is in the middle of a pile of shit! Don't you find it ironic that the so-called pragmatism of lesser evil politics has led us to the brink of fascism and climate apocalypse? I admit that things have gone from bad to worse to rotten to... whatever the hell comes after rotten. But how do you know this is caused by electoral politics? There are many factors you're leaving out of the equation. It's at least one of the factors. It's probably a result of material conditions like the falling rate of profit. And you claiming that it's caused by lesser evil electoral politics? That's just pseudo-history bullshit. 
It's simple logic. You don't have an alternate timeline where you can see how things would have turned out if we hadn't done lesser evil voting this whole time. If you ask me, it would have turned out even worse. Now you're speculating. Even if this is having the negative effect you say it is, how much damage is it doing? And how does that compare to the damage that would be caused by not doing lesser evil politics and increasing the chances that the greater evil wins? That would be worse. You don't know that. Oh, but you do? Alex, just think if all the time people spent on electoral politics had instead been spent building a working class movement, this movement would be pushing both parties to the left. If we had done this, maybe the greater evil candidate would look like Bernie Sanders. Again with the speculating. This is the most dangerous moment in human history. The doomsday clock is closer to midnight than it's ever been. With Trump, an apocalyptic level of global warming is inevitable, and nuclear war is a lot more likely. It's you who's speculating if you think Biden will make us safer. I give up. I give up. I've explained over and over why voting for Biden is the only reasonable decision, but you refuse to listen and continue to shame me for voting. I'm not shaming you. Hold your nose and vote if you want, but stop encouraging people to believe in this sham. God, it's so fucking depressing. I can't fucking stand it. What's depressing is that even with humanity's survival in the balance, you still refuse to vote. I knew we shouldn't have had this conversation. I don't, I don't think we should keep talking. Good. I don't think we should talk either. Maybe not for a while. No, I didn't mean it like that. Well, I did. Alex, wait. Shit. Can you believe that fucking liberal? Can you believe that crazy ass anarchist? She thinks she knows everything. She thinks she has it all figured out. Just vote for the lesser evil and get the less evil outcome. She thinks she can look at history and pinpoint what got us here, as if things aren't way more complex. Things are way more complex. She doesn't see all the unintended consequences. She makes these baseless, wild assumptions, and yet she's so sure of herself. I just wish I, I could, could say, say this, this to her in a, in a way, way she understood. understood. back? Should I call her back? She's calling me back! <laughs> Hi, Alex? Hi, Luna. Sorry I hung up. That's okay. I'm just in a bad mood lately. The election is so depressing and I still have that damn yeast infection. Ugh, it's been two months, Bregen. You, you, you need to take care of that. Look, some things are coming together in my mind and I'll try to say them, but you have to be patient with me, okay? I can do that. I really value what you said about the importance of organizing. I would love to see the working class taking action to win reforms. I would love if through that struggle we build the capacity, confidence, solidarity, and shared vision of radical transformation to create a new and better world. I'm happy to hear that. My problem is that we are so far away from having anything even close to that. There was a time when we were organized and powerful, and we carried the vision of a new world in our hearts. But those days are long gone, and until we rebuild a movement like that, I don't think we're ready to stop giving elections our attention. But how are we going to get there? If I know what you're going to say. Electoral politics damages our ability to build this movement. I'm not convinced by that enough to stay silent on elections, but I do think I need to give elections less attention than I have been. Hopefully way less. And put more attention on building a movement. Because you're right, we need to break this cycle of dependency on politicians. Well, okay. Does that 
satisfy you? Well, satisfy is a pretty high bar. I mean, I appreciate your progress. Oh god, I sound condescending. I'm sorry, but I can't lie to you, Alex. You're right that we don't currently have a working class movement, let alone a socialist movement, but I think this is all the more reason to reject electoral politics, because if we don't, we make it harder to build the solution we need. All right, if that's how you feel. But I honestly am grateful that you've been open-minded to what I've said and come to some new conclusions. Thank you. And what about you? Huh? Have you come to new conclusions based on what I said? Um, that I should grow a beard? Huh? Uh, so you're not gonna vote? But Luna, just take 20 minutes out of one day to vote for the least bad option, then get back to organizing the revolution or whatever. I'm not gonna do it. Oh well, I tried. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I have something that I think will cheer you up. Oh? What? Come, I'll show you. <laughs> come where? How? Just, just come. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> Isn't this great? H how the fuck did we get here? Oh, whoa! That was awesome! Pretty cool, huh? This is way better than voting! Damn right! Hello! Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you and that you took the time to watch. Whatever you're struggling with, I hope you're coping well and that everything turns out okay. This video comes with a written supplement, so if you'd like to read that, the link is in the video description. I don't have Patreon, but if you'd like to help my channel grow and help my dreams come true, please click like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the bell to turn on all notifications. And please share this video and tell people about my channel. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best. Um, what's with this Nyan cat's hair? I don't know. I think they're a lifestylist or something. Oh.